All right, so I want to tell you two stories today about how an animal helped someone learn about Jesus. And you might wonder how that's possible. How could an animal help someone learn about Jesus? Well, here's what you need to know. First of all, in the Amazon, most of the people there don't live in big cities. They live in little houses out along the edges of the river, and that river goes for many, many miles. And a person might live all by themselves, and there's nobody around them for five miles or 10 miles or 20 miles. And if you're a cull porter, that means a person who goes door to door selling books about Jesus, well, you have to travel a long way to go door to door because one door might be here and the next door might be 20 miles away. So the cult porters will travel around and what they'll usually do is first they will go and just travel down the river. They'll go from door to door in their canoe and they will stop at the door of the, of the little house that they'll find. And they'll say, hey, here's some books about Jesus. Jesus loves you. He really wants you to know about him and he wants to be your friend. Would you like to have one of these? And if the people want one, then the cult porter will tell them, okay, have your money ready. I'll be back in a few weeks and I'll bring the book to you. Because the cult porters can't carry all the books at once in their little canoe. So they just bring a few books to show. They go around and show them and then they come back to deliver the ones that people want. That makes sense? It makes sense, yeah. You don't want to take a bunch of books in a canoe all at once if you can help it. Well, the people have, will usually then get really excited and they'll be waiting for the book to arrive. And then when the book comes, they'll have saved up some money. It's usually not very expensive, just a couple dollars. And then the cult porter will arrive and say, here's the book that I, that I promised you. And the person will say, okay, thank you, here's the money. And then they'll get their book. Well, these stories are about two different people who kind of didn't, who kind of changed their minds who kind of said at first, yeah, I want the book, and then later on, they didn't want it. The first one was with a cult porter named Francisco. Francisco had gone in his canoe, he'd gone to all these houses, going from door to door down the river, and he'd found a lot of people who wanted books. Now he was coming back to deliver those books, and he got to one of the houses, way out there along the jungle, along the river, and when he got there and pulled his canoe up to the shore, he was glad that he was going downstream because the river had been going really, really heavy that day. If you had to canoe up against the river current, that's very hard. But if you're going with the river current, that's really easy. He was so glad, oh, I'm going with the river. I can just stop right here, this will be easy, and then I'll go on to the next house. He got out of the canoe, he went up to the door, and the lady was, of the house was there, and he said, oh, hello, do you remember me? I was here a few weeks ago, and I talked to you and your husband, and you guys said that you wanted a book about Jesus. I brought it for you. And the lady said, oh, um, no, uh, I can't take that book now. And he said, why not? You wanted it before. She says, no, um, it's just that uh, my husband's not here and uh, I, don't, uh, I don't have any money for it. I, I, don't, I don't think I can take it now. The culprit said, are you sure? Because you, know, you guys said last time that you, you had the money already and that you just needed me to bring the book. And the lady said, no, no, I'm no, sorry. No, 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 you can go. So Francisco said, well, what can I do? I'm not going to force her to keep the book. So he went back and he got in his canoe. He made sure everything was balanced out nice and ready. And he went on down the river. And the river was flowing really fast, a nice strong current. He started to go pretty quickly down the river. And then he heard the woman calling him from back up by the shore. Hey, hey, Francisco, come back. He thought, oh, OK, maybe she changed her mind. I guess I better go back. Oh, it's a lot harder to canoe back upstream. He turned his canoe around and now he had to paddle hard and the river was trying to push him backwards. Ugh, he was sweating. He finally made it back. Ugh, ugh, ugh. And he stopped by the edge of the shore, he tied his canoe and he said, what's the matter? Well, how can I help you? She said, oh, after you left, I looked in the chicken coop where we keep our chickens and there's a big snake in there. My husband's not home. Could you please help kill the snake? Well, Francisco, like all smart cult porters, he never traveled without a weapon going down the Amazon River because you never knew if there might be a big snake or an alligator or a jaguar. You had to defend yourself. So he had a rifle in his canoe. He said, okay, I can help you kill the snake. That's all right. So he got out of the canoe. He grabbed his rifle. He made sure it was loaded. It was all set. He went up to the hen house and sure enough, there was a snake. And it wasn't just a little snake. If you've ever seen a little snake in your garden, it wasn't like a medium sized snake like you might see in some pictures or maybe in the smaller cages at the zoo. Have you ever seen an anaconda? There are the snakes that get really fat and really long. This snake was really big and it had a whole chicken in its mouth. Can you fit a chicken in your mouth? I can't fit a whole chicken in my mouth. This snake just opened his jaws up and he'd eaten a chicken. And Francisco said, well, we need to kill this snake. It's a big, dangerous snake. So he aimed carefully, he shot, and he killed the anaconda. And after the anaconda was dead, they pulled it out of the hen house, and there was 18 feet of snake. That snake was 18 feet long. It was huge. Do you know how long 18 feet is? Oh, I will show you. 
Here's how long 18 feet is. If I start standing right here, and then I step forward six paces, one, two, three, four, five, six, that snake was as long as from Sophia to me. <laughs> I don't even like little snakes. A big snake like that? No, thank you. Well, the lady was very grateful that Francisco had killed a snake for her. And she said, thank you so much. Oh, my husband wasn't here. I don't know what I would have done. That snake would have eaten all of our chickens and then we would have gone hungry. And Francisco said, well, you're welcome. I'm glad I could help. And then he went back down to the canoe. He got in the canoe. He put his rifle away. He untied the canoe. He started going down the stream. And guess what he heard? Francisco, Francisco, come back, come back. Are you kidding me? Now he had to paddle upstream again. So he turned the canoe around. Oh, 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 paddling, sweating until he got back up to the shore. What's the matter? Is there another snake? She said, no, but um, I, uh, I, um, I found some money after all, and I think I'll take that book. Now, do you think she had really lost the money in the first place? No, she had the money. She had had the money for weeks already, but she had kind of not been wanting to hear more about Jesus. She thought, maybe I don't need to read this book. And then after she saw how Francisco helped her, she thought, you know, he was so nice to me that I think maybe I should listen to what he has to say and I'll take that book after all. So because of that anaconda coming in and attacking her chickens, the woman got a chance to ask Francisco to come back. And because Francisco helped her, she realized she really did want to learn about Jesus after all. So that's the first story of how an animal helps somebody learn about Jesus. Because that woman took the book and she learned about Jesus from it. Now, the second story happened to another cult porter. His name was Jose. Jose had done the same thing. He had gone out along another area of the Amazon in his canoe. He'd gone to many houses, paddling along, showing them the books. And he'd come to one place where there were two houses kind of close to each other. There was one house, and then another house was only like maybe a, about a half a mile away. And he had shown them both the books, and both houses had said, oh yes, we would like a book. Please come back and bring us a book. So now he had come back a few weeks later, and when he got to the first house, going on down the river, he came and he knocked on the door, and there was no answer. He knocked on the door again, and he was about to leave when this little girl came to the door. She was only six years old. Is anybody here six years old? Yeah. Raise your hand if you're six years old. Yeah, yeah. All right. You can put your hands down. And she had a little baby in her arms who was only about six months old. That's a little, little baby. And she said, hello. And the co-porter Jose said, oh, hi, little girl. I remember you. I was here last time. Where's your mom? Because she wanted me to bring her this book. And the little girl said, oh, she went to the town and she will not be back for a couple of days. And the culprit thought there was something a little weird about how she said that. Like maybe she wasn't telling the truth, but he also thought it's kind of weird that the mommy would go and leave a little, little baby here with just a young child. Would any of you six-year-olds like to be left alone to take care of a baby for two days? No, I don't think I would want to be left alone with a little baby for two days. So Jose said, okay, if you say so, I'm sorry she's not here. So he went on back to his canoe, went down the river a little ways to the next house that was pretty close by. And when he got to the next house, he got out and he came walking up. And as he came walking up, there were a couple girls standing outside the house there. And they said, help, 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 help. Jose said, what, what's the matter? They said, there's an alligator in the backyard and it's dangerous. We need help to catch it and get rid of it. Can you kill it or something? And Jose said, um, I could help you. I've got a special harpoon. It's like kind of like a, like a special spear and it has a cord on it, a wire on it. So I can stab the alligator in the tail and then it'll be stuck with the wire and we can trap it that way. And then maybe when your mom or dad get back, we can help, we can capture it. And so they said, yes, yes, our daddy said he'd be back very soon. Please help us, the alligator is so scary. And alligators are scary. I'm almost more scared of an alligator than I am of an anaconda because an alligator can go pretty fast and he's got big teeth. Ugh. So Jose went down to his canoe and the weapon he had, he didn't have a rifle, he had a harpoon, this long stick with a sharp point to it and it had this wire attached to it so he could throw it at things and then pull it back to him. So he went in the backyard, he looked and sure enough, there was an alligator sitting there low in the swamp in the back of the house in the mud, just looking at things. And Jose said, oh yeah, this is dangerous. I need to get rid of this alligator. And as he was getting ready to get the alligator, he also noticed something else. He noticed that they had a nice big cl uh, cluster of banana trees growing over in one corner of the yard. All these banana trees all close together. And they were kind of moving a little bit, like there might be something in there. And he thought, could there be another alligator in there? I wonder what that is. And he was paying careful attention to make sure it wasn't a second alligator. And you know what he saw? There was a person in there. There was a woman in there. In fact, that looked like the woman from the first house. 
the woman who had left her six-year-old girl and her six-month-old little baby at the house. <gasps> oh, so the little six-year-old girl had been lying. That woman hadn't gone to town. That woman had run away when she saw the club porter coming because she didn't want to take the book that she had ordered. <gasps> Another person who changed her mind and said, I don't think I want to learn about Jesus after all. Well, the coal porter had a great idea. It was a little sneaky, it was a little funny, and he, he used it and it worked. Here's what happened. He thought to himself, oh, that lady doesn't want to talk to me. Well, I'll see what happens. So he used the harpoon and he got the alligator's tail and got it caught up in the wire and the alligator was thrashing about and he tied the other end of the wire to a tree really quick. The alligator got angry and started snapping its jaws and looking at him. And you know what he did? He started acting like he was really scared. He went, oh no! And the little girls who were watching, they got really scared. They ran into the house. He didn't run into the house. You know where he ran? He ran right into the banana tree bushes. He ran, jumped in there, and he went, Ah, oh, the alligator's gonna get me! And he jumped in there, and then he went, Oh! Because the woman was in there. He said, Oh! You're in here too? I just had to hide from the alligator! And the woman said, Oh! Hello! Um... Did you bring my book? And he said, Yes! I brought your book! I was gonna leave it at your house, but your little daughter said you weren't there. I'm so glad I ran into you. Now, who had really arranged for him to run into her there? Was it just a coincidence? No, God had actually sent that alligator to get Jose to go to the backyard to help the girls, and then he could see the woman there. And because of that, even though the woman was trying to trick Jose, and she was trying to trick God too, well, you can't trick God. And Jose was able to find her after all and say, here's your book, here's your book that you ordered. And she was able to learn about Jesus too. So that's two different stories from the Amazon about how God can use animals to make sure that people learn about Him, even if they're feeling kind of stubborn or kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to learn about God. Maybe I don't want that book after all. God can still help them find out about Him. So, let's never forget two things from our mission story. Number one, if you ever get a chance to learn about Jesus, don't try to hide from it. Don't try to go, I don't want to hear about Jesus right now. I don't want to know about Jesus and how much He loves me. Because that's not the right choice. Jesus is going to help you find out about Him. He doesn't want you to plug up your ears and run away. And the second thing is, if you're ever trying to figure out, how can I help someone else learn about Jesus? I don't know if I can do it on my own. You can remember, hey, guess what? If God can use an alligator and an anaconda to help people learn about Jesus, He can use you too. You're a smart boy, you're a smart girl, you know about Jesus already, you know songs about Him, you know how to pray. Jesus can use you to tell people about Him too. All right, let's say a quick prayer. We're going to pray for the missionaries in the Amazon and all around the world who are helping people learn about Jesus. Let's close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you love us and that you love the whole world. Thank you that you like to send us and people like us out as missionaries to tell people about you. Thank you that even when people feel stubborn and don't want to hear about you or they might try to run away from the good news, that you can still reach them, even using animals to help them learn about you. Help us to always listen to what you want to tell us and to be helpers to share the good news to others. Be with all the missionaries in the Amazon, including all the missionaries that still use boats called the Luzero to go around and tell the world about you. We love you very much. Amen. Oh, and Jesus, thank you also for the thunderstorms and rain because it helps the crops to grow and the plants to be nice. We know that the thunder gets kind of scary and the lightning can be kind of scary, but we trust you to take care of us. That's why we sang our songs this morning, saying that we know that with you all things are possible and that we are safe with you. We love you. Amen.